I will like to apologize ahead of time because you will not hear a pastor today, you're going to hear a historian. <laughs> today is a special day in American history, one that most all of you remember, and I will absolutely guarantee that you probably remember the exact place and what you were doing at the time that 9-11 took place. If you remember, it was a beautiful late summer day, sort of like what we had on Friday. We were up, getting ready to go to work. Some of us were already there. Some of you were preparing. At 8.46 a.m., everything changed. It went from a beautiful day to a nightmare. If you remember, at 8.46 a.m. on September 11th, the first plane hit the North Tower. And if you were in front of your television or listening to your radio, it broke in, the plane had hit the World Trade Tower. For many, it brought to mind an event that took place in August of 1945 in the nighttime when a B-25 military plane accidentally hit the world, I mean the uh, Empire State Building. And newscasters were saying, oh, is this a repeat of what happened? At 9.03, that theory went out the window because at that point, the second airplane hit the South Tower of the World Trade Center. At that point, we all knew that it was something different, that we were going to be attacked. If you remember, most of us we have run to TV or listened to the radio, you could see and hear the confusion, the sirens, people running, shouting, screaming, not knowing. We're all, what happened? Why did this happen? Then, at 9.37, we knew that we had been attacked because the third plane hit the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. And then finally, at 10.03, reports came of Flight 93 crashing in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Little did we realize until later that the passengers on that plane had stopped the terrorists from flying that plane into the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And we all remember the famous world, words of Todd Reamer, let's roll. Now, if you look and you follow the sequence of events, right at the same time that the plane crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the South Tower collapsed. About 10 to 15 minutes later, the North Tower goes down. And unmistakably, the clouds of dust engulfed the canyons of New York City. People were engulfed in the dust. They ran, trying to hide. And when the dust cleared, you saw the ash. It looked like a snowstorm, as one person called it. What I would like to say to you now is the, the final tower, when it came in a few days later, 3,000 people had perished. Statistics, 246 people perished on the fl four flights that crashed. 2,606 people perished in their offices, in the World Trade Towers and in the Pentagon. 343 firefighters never came back. 60 police officers never went home. Eight paramedics also perished. That is why I have the shirt on. If you remember what 
what you were thinking, and as the day went on, watching, waiting, that evening, the President of the United States, George W. Bush, came in on the television to try to calm and assure us of what had happened and what we were going to do. On September 12th, the day after, if you watched the news or drove around, what did you see? Hundreds and hundreds of American flags, yellow ribbons tied around trees. For once, because we had just come off a contentious presidential election, people forget that. George W. Bush was not really accepted as a president of the United States until the Supreme Court of the United States decided that the hanging Chad election of Florida was decided. And to Al Gore's credit, he conceded the election. But the country was still divided. Sound familiar? That shows how history repeats itself. When you talk about the 3,000 people who perished that day, that number increases as the years have passed because we have a tendency to forget all the first responders who rushed the wrong way, as we say in the firefighting, because everybody else runs away and we run towards it. They did the same. And think about all the toxic chemicals and everything that they were dealing with, even though they had the air packs on and everything. Over the years, the hundreds that we have lost, they have been added to that total. It's one of those times that you try to find something that's going to kind of say some things. I apologize, but I am plagiarizing the speech given by George W. Bush last year in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. 20 year, 21 years ago today, we all found in different ways, in different places, but all at the same moment, that our lives and our world were changed forever. The world was loud with carnage, sirens, confusion, then, at the end of the day, the quiet, the empty homes, the empty tables of the families whose loved ones never came back. In those fateful hours, we, were, we learned many lessons about ourselves. We saw that Americans were vulnerable, but not fragile that we possess a core of strength that survives the worst that life can offer. We learned the thousand small issues, excuse me, the thousand small performances of brave acts and kindness that are more common than we could ever have imagined. Emerging from the face of death, bravery that we did not know that we really had. Many of us have tried to make spiritual sense of what happened that day. There is no simple explanation for the mix of providence and human will that sets the direction of our lives. But comfort can come from the different sort of knowledge. A knowledge that after wandering through long and lost darkness, we found grace and strength. Today, that unity of purpose, that anger that we felt, we look back, and we find the strength 
And if you remember George W. Bush standing with a handheld loudspeaker saying, I hear you. He said, shortly the world will hear us. And very shortly after that, he asked Congress to be able to send troops to Afghanistan to root out the evil that perpetrated the attack on the United States on September 11th. The people that we never even knew existed, we never even knew that they hated us that much. The name Al-Qaeda, the name Osama bin Laden, that's who we were after. And if you remember, hundreds of people men and women volunteered to go and carry out that mission. Today we must still honor those. And again, 7,000 died carrying out that task. And it became a 20-year war, which ended last year at this particular time. And again, history repeating itself. You remember the airplanes taking off from the airports in Kabul with Afghanis hanging on, trying to get out of the country. For those of us who remember, it is reminiscent of April 30th, 1975, with the United States evacuation of the U.S. Embassy in Saigon with Vietnamese trying to hang on to the helicopters so they could get out. History does repeat itself. George W. Bush ended his speech with this sentiment, and it is still true today. When it comes to the unity that we felt after 9-11 in America, Common life seems to turn every disagreement into an argument. Every argument into a class of cultures. So much of our politics has become a naked appeal to anger, fear, resentment. That leaves us worried about the future of our nation. This is where we need God to lay his healing hand upon us, to heal us and give us the unity that we had following 9-11. I will close with this. Today, as you live and enjoy the breaths you take, and tonight, before you go to sleep, in preparation for your life tomorrow, <clears throat> kiss the ones that you love. Snuggle, <clears throat> excuse me, snuggle a little tighter and never take one second of your life for granted.